so hello guys and welcome to my channel sir. today in these lectures we will try to solve all the important numericals asked in high voltage engineering sir. so here is starting with the first numerical sir. so here we have an impulse generator has 8 stages and with each condenser rated for 0.16 microfarad and 125 kilovolt given and the load capacitor available is 1000 picofarad and find the series resistance series resistance and the damping resistance needed to produce 1.2 slash 50 microsecond and this is the wave front time and this is the wave tail times given impulse wave and what is the maximum output voltage of the generators if the charging voltage is given as 120 kilovolt and here we have to calculate the maximum output voltage of the generators so for capacitor C1, since C1 is the generator capacitance, so C1 is, C1 is given as here 0.16 microfarad and here we have given altogether 8 stages. So 0.16 upon 8, it gives 0.02 microfarad. Similarly for C2, C2 is the load capacitance. So for load capacitance, directly we can write the value given in the questions and that is 1000 picofarad. So it will be 1000 picofarad and which is 0.001 microfarad. And now we can see here, here 1.2 slash 50 microsecond is given. It means this is T1 and this is T2. We have front time and we have tail time given. So for we have front time T1, we have given 1.2 microsecond. This is 1.2 here, means value of T1 given here. And T1, and to calculate the wave front time, we have the formula as T1 is equals to 3R1 into C1 into C2 upon C1 plus C2 and 1.2 microsecond is given so 1.2 into 10 power minus 6 3r1 and we have given the value of c1 and c2 here we have given the value of c1 and this is c2 so just substitute the value of c1 and c2 here and from this we will get the value of r1 and that is r1 equal to 420 ohm now the wave tail time that is t2 t2 is the wave tail times and in order to calculate the t2 we have the formula as 0.7 into R1 plus R2 and C1 plus C2 and here we can see the wave tail time is given as this is the wave front time and this is the wave tail times and this is 50 microsecond so wave tail time is here 0. Point, means 50 into 10 power minus 6 and its formula to and the formula to calculate T2 that is wave tail time is 0. 0.7 into R1 in plus R2 into C1 plus C2 so just, just substitute the value of R1, R2, C1 and C2 sorry the value of R1, C1 and C2 will, will get the value of R2 from here sir. so on solving we will get the value of R2 as 2981 ohm and now here we can see we have to calculate the maximum output voltage so the DC charging voltage for 8 stages will be V into N V max means V is equals to N and we have 8 stages given so 8 into 120 kilo volt is given in the question sir. Here you can see here charging voltage is 120 kilovolt given in the question. Sir. So it will be N into V. So 8 stages is given. So 8 into 120 and that is going to give 960 kilovolt. Now here we have the formula to calculate the maximum output voltage and that is V upon R1 into C2 and this is alpha minus beta. This is alpha minus this is beta. alpha minus beta and e to the power minus alpha t1 minus e to the power minus beta t1 sir. and here the uh, alpha is calculated as alpha equals 1 upon r1 into c2 and uh, if you substitute the value of r1 and c2 you will get 2.38 into 10 power 6 similarly in order to calculate beta we have 1 upon r2 into c1 sir. so we will get here 0 0.0167 into 10 power 6 and the maximum output voltage will be right now here v upon r1 into c2 and alpha minus beta and e to the power minus alpha t1 minus e to the power minus beta t1 sir. and if we substitute the value of v r1 c2 alpha beta and t1 so we will get the value as minus 892.37 kilovolt and this is the negative it means 892.37 kilovolt and this is the negative impulse voltage similarly here we have the next numerical and 
and here we have a Cockcroft Walton type voltage multiplier has eight stages with capacitance and all equal to 0.05 microfarad and the supply transformer secondary voltage is 125 kV at a frequency of 150 Hz and if the load current is to be supplied that is 5 mA and here we have to calculate the percentage ripple the regulation the optimal number of stages and the maximum output voltage is here so the first one is the calculation for percentage ripple so calculation of percentage ripple so here we have ripple voltage given as del b so del b equals to i upon fc and n into n plus 1 upon 2 and here we have in the equation the value of i is given as 5 mA similarly the frequency is given as 150 Hz and the value of c is given as 0 0.05 microfarad and here uh, number of stages is altogether given 8, 8 but right now we will take n equal to 16 say. because in each stage 2 capacitors are placed so total value of n will be 8 into 2 that is going to give 16 capacitors so here in place of n we will use the value as 16 here so del, v, so del v will be i upon fc and in place of i we have 5 mA so 5 into 10 power minus 3 upon 150 into 0 0.05 into 10 power minus 6 and in place of n we have 16 into 16 plus 1 upon 2 and that is 90.7 kV and now percentage ripple will be del v into 100 upon 2 n v max so 90.7 into 100 this is in kV and 2 into n here we have used 2 into n so right now we will use the value of n as the number of stages and here the number of stages is given as 8 so 2 into 8 into 125 v max so we will get here 4.53 percentage so our percentage ripple will be 4.53 percentage now calculation of voltage means voltage drop so voltage drop in order to calculate voltage drop we have the formula as del v equals to i upon fc and 2 third 2 upon 3 n cube plus n square upon 2 minus n upon 6 and here uh, the value of i f and c is given in the equations so just we will use the value of i here and i is given as 5 mA so 5 into 10 power minus 3 and f is 150 hours similarly c is 0 0.05 into 10 power minus 6 given in the equations and 2 third means 2 upon 3 into n cube and value of n is 8 stages used here so 8 to the power 3 plus 8 square upon 2 minus 8 upon 6 and on calculation it is going to give to 48 kV and the percentage regulation is calculated as del v upon 2 n v max so we have del v to 48 kV so 248 upon 2 into 8 into 125 and this is going to give 12.4 percentage and now in order to calculate the optimum number of stages here we have the formula as n optimum equals to root under v max into fc upon i so v max is 125 kilo volt so 125 into frequency is 150 and c is given as here's 0 0.05 into 10 power minus 6 and here 125 kilo volt is given so 125 into 10 power 3 is written in the last year upon i so 5 into 10 power minus c so and you will get on calculation 13.69 and this 13.69 and that is equivalent to 14 stages now the maximum output voltage with n optimum stages so n optimum into 4 third of v max so n optimum is here 13.69 so 13.69 into 4 third into 125 kilo volt and this is going to give 2281.66 kilo volt so our maximum output voltage with n optimum stages is 2281.66 kilo volt and similarly here we have the next numericals and impulse voltage generators described by the following equation vt equals to e to the power minus alpha t minus e to the power minus beta t can be realized by the following rc circuit and the source capacitor is initially charged to a voltage e then the switch yes is closed express r1 and r2 in terms of u in terms of c1 c2 and alpha beta so here we have this is the circuit diagram and here we can see at the output voltage means v0 t so from here v0 t can be calculated as 1 upon c2 and integration 0 to t and i2 into dt so taking the laplace transform of these equations 
we will get here v not s equals to 1 upon I and mean, in here we have c2 1 upon c2 so on taking the laplace transform it will be 1 upon c2 into s yes, and i2 into dt it will be capital i2s yes. now taking the current through c1 as i1 and its current and its transform value as i1 s yes, means its laplace transform is i1s yes. so i2s yes, here we will use the current divider formula means I2s yes, here, the, this here we have I2 similarly and here we have I1 here So I2s is going to be R2 upon R2 plus 1 upon C2s into I1s. Here we, here we have used the current divider formula. So I1s is going to give V upon S and 1 upon 1 upon 1 by C1 into S plus R1 plus R2 into 1 upon C2 into S plus R2 plus 1 by C2 S. Since here, for first case we have used the voltage divider formula. So I2, I2 will be R2 upon R2 plus A means A these two will be in parallel right now so here we have used the for voltage divided by r2 upon r2 plus and here in laplace transform the value of c is replaced as 1 upon 1 upon c s so 1 upon c 20 s into i1 s and i1 s is going to give here right now this and this will be in parallel and the resultant of this will be in series with this and again in series with this so the value of i1 will be i1s equal to v upon s and 1 upon c1s plus r1 plus r2 into 1 upon c2s upon r2 plus 1 upon c2s. Now substituting i1s gives here v not s is equals to and here we can see v not s is equals to 1 upon c2s into i2s and first we have substituted the value of i2s so on substituting the, this value of i2s in this first equation we will get 1 upon c2s into and in place of i2s here we have r2 upon r2 plus 1 upon c2s into i1s and again here we have i1s and i1s is again substituted here so finally we will get here 1 upon c2s into r2 upon r2 plus 1 upon c2s into v upon s and 1 upon 1 upon c1s plus r1 plus r2 into 1 upon c2s upon r2 plus 1 upon c2s and on further simplifications and rearrangement we will get the output voltage as a v not s in s transform means v upon r1 into c2 and 1 upon s square plus 1 upon c1 r1 plus 1 upon c2 r2 plus 1 upon c2 and r1 into s plus 1 upon c1 c2 r1 r2 so the roots of equation in terms of alpha and beta will be right now here so s square plus means here we have taken this whole terms from here to here so s square plus 1 upon c1 r1 plus 1 upon c2 r2 plus 1 upon c2 r1 into s plus 1 upon c1 c2 r1 r2 are found from the relation so alpha plus beta is going to give a minus 1 upon c1 r1 plus 1 upon c2 r2 plus 1 upon c2 and r1 means this value and that will be negative sir. similarly alpha into beta is going to give at the last part we have 1 upon c1 c2 r1 r2 here this term is the for alpha into beta so alpha into beta is going to be 1 upon c1 c2 i into r1 into r2 here and uh, if taking in bohr's transform of v not s yes, and we will get in time domain right now so in time domain the output voltage will be v not t is equals to v upon r1 r1 into c2 and alpha minus beta and exponential minus alpha t minus exponential minus beta t so hence the roots can be approximated as alpha is equivalent to 1 upon r1 c2 and beta will be 1 upon r2 into c1 so this is our required answer similarly here we have the next one an impulse current generator has a total capacitance of 8 microfarad here given and the charging voltage is 25 kilo volt given and if the generator has to give an output current of 
10 kilo amperes and here the output current given as 10 kilo ampere with wave font and wave tail time given as 8 slash 20 microseconds wave forms calculate the circuit inductance and the dynamic resistance in the circuit so here here we have given the wave font and wave tail time as 8 slash 20 microseconds so for an 8 slash 20 microsecond impulse generator the value of alpha is equals to r upon 2 l and the value of alpha will be You can remember this value or you can take or you can just take a look at the tables given in the book. So its value will be alpha equal to 0 0.0535 into 10 power 6. And you can simply check the book of here MS Naidu and VK Kamarazu to get the table. And the product LC is cost to 65 and this value is also taken from the tables. And in this question we have given the value of C and that is 8 microfarad. So the circuit inductance will be 65 upon 8 into 10 power minus 6 and it, this is going to be 8.125 into 10 power 6 Henry. So you can just check out the table to get the value of LC and also the value of alpha. You can check out the MS Naidu or uh, MS Naidu and BK Kamarazu book for the tables. Now the dynamic resistance is calculated as 2L alpha and 2 into L, uh, 2L alpha and in place of L that is inductance here we have given 65 upon 8 into 10 power minus 6 so 65 upon 8 into 10 power minus 6 into alpha in place of alpha here we have 0 0.0535 into 10 power 6 so on solution we get here 0 0.8694 into 10 to the power minus 12 ohm and the peak current is given as Vc upon 14 equal to 10 kilo amperes. So this is our formula Bc upon 10 sorry Bc upon 14 equals to 10 kilo ampere given in the question here. To give an output current at 10 kilo amperes so Bc upon 14 equals to 10 means peak current this is a formula for peak current Bc upon 14 and here B should be in kilo volt similarly C should be in microfarad and I should be in kilo amperes so that this formula will be valid here so we have to calculate the charging voltage means value of V so V will be 14 into 10 upon 8 and that is going to give 15.5 kilo volt similarly here we have the next important numericals and this is also frequently asked numericals so here we have a tesla coil has a primary winding rated for 10 kilo volt if L1, L2 and coefficient of coupling K are 10 milli henry 200 milli henry and 0 0.6 respectively find the peak value of output voltage if the capacitance in the primary side is given as 2.0 microfarad and a data on the secondary side is given as 1 nanofarad neglect the winding resonance find also the highest resonant frequency produced with rated voltage applied and here we know the formula for mutual inductance here m is called m is given as m equals to k times of root and l into l1 into l2 and the value of k here we have we can see here value of l1 l2 and coupling constant means k is also given and that is 0 0.6 given so we'll get 0 0.6 into root under 10 into means l1 and l2 so 10 milli henry into 200 milli henry and this is going to give 26.82 milli henry and again omega 1 in order to calculate the omega 1 we have 1 upon root under l1 l1 c1 so 1 upon root under 10 into 10 power minus 3 into 2 into 10 power minus 6 and uh, this is going to give 7.07 into 10 power 3 and that is radian per second and here we have given the value of L1 and C1 so just we need to substitute the value in the formula similarly we have sigma as one, sigma is equal to root under 1 minus k square and that is going to give 0 0.8 just remember the formula and you can easily calculate all the uh, parameters uh, act in the question uh. and here similarly for omega 2 omega 2 will be 1 upon root on l2 into c2 and also the value of l2 and c2 is mentioned in the questions uh, and on the on calculation we will get 7.0728.4 radian per second uh. similarly gamma 2 square is going to be omega 1 square plus omega 2 square upon 2 plus root and omega 1 square omega 2 square upon 2 minus uh, sigma square omega 1 square omega 2 
and similarly omega 1 square is going to be omega 1 square plus omega 2 square by 2 minus this so once you get substitute the value of omega 1 omega 2 and the sigma just now we have obtained the value for omega 1 omega 2 and sigma just substitute all the value will get the value of omega 2 similarly if you substitute the value of omega 1 omega 2 and sigma here we will get the value of omega 1 as same followed in uh, followed to calculate omega 2 so substituting all this value will get here gamma 2 and gamma 1 so here the highest frequency produced will be gamma 2 upon 2 pi and gamma 2 is just we have calculated as 70.83 into 10 power 3 radian power, radian power seconds upon 2 pi and that is going to be 11.27 kilohertz now in order to calculate the peak value of output voltage and here we have the formula v2 peak as v into m upon sigma l1 l2 c2 and 1 upon gamma 2 square minus gamma 1 square and we have uh, given all the values that is vm sigma l1 l2 c2 gamma 2 gamma 1 so all the parameters are given in the equations and the missing parameters are already calculated so just we need to substitute all the values and we will get a here as 33.61 kilovolt and sometimes if energy efficiency is given in the equations and that is if suppose it is 5 percent is given and if you are asked to obtain the output voltage then do to calculate the output voltage we have the formula as v2 is equals to v1 into efficiency c1 upon c2 and here we have the energy efficiency 5 percent is there and that is 0 0.05 into c1 upon c2 so c1 is also given in the equations and that is 2 into 10 by minus 6 and also c2 is also given in the equations that is 1 9 1 nanofarad so on so we will get a 31.6 kilovolt and here we have again the important again one important numerical sign a 12 stage impulse generator has 0.126 microfarad capacitor and the wave font and wave tail times sorry the wave font and wave tail resistance are connected at are 800 ohms and 5000 ohms respectively and if the load capacitor is 1000 picofarad given find the front and tail times of the impulse we have produced so here for the first for generator capacitance we have to multiply with the number of stages uh, sorry divide with the number of stages so here c1 will be 0 0.1 to 6 upon 14 and that is 0 0.01505 microfarad and similarly load capacity is given in the equation as c2 is equal to 0 0.001 microfarad and the value of r1 is also given similarly r2 is also given in the equation and just we need to remember the formula and the formula to calculate the wave on time that is t1 is 3r1 into c1 into c2 upon c1 plus c2 so just substitute the value of r1 c1 c2 will get the value of t1 and that is going to give 2.19 microsecond similarly time to tail t2 will be 0 0.7 into r1 plus r2 and c1 plus c2 and again substituting value of r1 r2 c1 c2 will get a here as 46.7 microseconds so this is our time to tail means we have tail times and this is our wave font times now here we have an electrostatic voltmeter has two parallel plates the mobile plate is 10 cm in diameter with 10 kV between the plate the pool is 5 into 10 power minus 3 the pool means force here given 5 into 10 power minus 3 newtons and determine the change in capacitance for a movement of 1 mm of mobile plate and here we have given the diameter d as 10 centimeters here 10 centimeter diameter is mentioned in the equations and that is in meter it is going to be 0 0.1 meters similarly spacing is given as 1 mm and voltage is given as 10 kV and force and force means here pool pool is 5 into 10 by minus 3 and this is the force so 5 into 10 by minus 3 newtons and we know area is calculated as area equals to pi d square upon 4 so on solving we will get here 7.853 into 10 power minus 3 meter square that means 7.853 into 10 power minus 3 meter square now here we have the formula as f is equals to 1 upon 2 epsilon b square upon d square into a and f is given as 5 into 10 by minus 3 and 1 upon epsilon means 8.85 into 10 by minus 12 into and in place of 10 kilovolt means 10,000 square upon d square into 
area just have calculated as 7.853 into 10 to minus 3. So here from here we will get the value of D as a D equal to 26.36 mm. Now the change in capacitance. Here we have to calculate the change in capacitance means C dash. And here we have the formula as B epsilon A into 1 upon D1 minus D2. So we have given the value of B and epsilon means 8.85 into 10 minus 2 bells. And again area we have also calculated area and here we have 1 upon D1 and in place of D1 we will use this value D means 26.36 mm. In place of D1 we will use this value means D1 and in place of D2. So D2 will be here. And here D2 will be means this value means D1 D1 plus this value means a spacing D is given as here 1 mm given in the question means 1 mm a spacing given so plus 1 mm here plus 1 mm now here D1 is given as 26.36 plus 1 mm gives 27.36 so here we have 1 upon D1 in place of D1 have this value means 26.36 so 1 upon 26.36 minus D2 we have 27.36 as D2 is equal to D1 plus 1 mm and so on solving we will get here 0 0.963 nanofarad and again here we have one important again one more important numerical sir. An absolute electrostatic voltmeter has a movable current plate 8 cm in diameter. And if the distance between the plate during a measurement is 4 mm, find the potential difference when the force of attraction is 0 0.2 gram watt. So here, So here we have, first we have to calculate the area, so for area we have pi d square upon 4, so pi upon 4 and diameter is 8 given, here we have, the diameter given as 8 centimeters, so area will be 16 pi centimeter square, and also a spacing is given as 4 mm in the question, sir. and here we have the formula as f equals to 1 by 2 epsilon b square upon d square into a, and here we have given the force is also given in the question as, here you can see, the force of attraction is 0 0.2 gram Wet. So here 0 0.2 into 10 power minus 3 for kg and if you calculate the 9.8 you will get in newtons. So 1 upon 2 equal 1 upon 2 into 8.85 in 8 to minus 2 bells. The value by epsilon this is 8.85 in 8 to minus 2 bells. So B square upon D square and D is a spacing means 4 mm given here. So 4 mm is 0 0.004 square into area and area is also given. Just now we have obtained the area and from this we will get the value of B as 1188 volt. Now here we have the numericals on shearing bridge. And here A 33 kilovolt 50 hertz high voltage shearing breeze is used to test a sample of insulation and the various arms has the following parameters on balance conditions. The standard capacitance is given as here 500 picofarad. The resistance branch is 800 ohm and the branch with parallel combination of R and C is, is given as 180 ohm and 0 0.15 microfarad. Determine the value of capacitance of this sample if it's parallel equivalent loss resistance, power factors and power loss. Determine the value of capacitance of the samples here. It's parallel equivalent loss resistance, power factors and power loss. So here we have given the parameter B is given as 33 kilovolt in the equation. Similar to frequency is given 50 hertz and the value of R4 is given as 800 ohm and similarly R3 is given as 180 ohm and C2 is the standard capacitance and standard capacitance is given as 500 picofarad in the equation. Sir. So 500 picofarad is 10 by minus 2 farad and C3 is again here 0 0.13 microfarad and C1 is the capacitance of samples. And here you can see this is our shear bridge. 
here these two R1 and C1 are in connected and parallel similarly R3 and C3 are in parallel here so in order to calculate the C1 means capacitance sample here have the formula R3 upon R4 into C2 and R3 is given as 180 upon R4 800 into C2 is given as 580 by minus 2 volts. So we'll get 1.125 into 10 by minus 2 uh, 10 Faraday. Now R1 or R I you can see it as a means no resistance of a cable. So R1 is calculated as R4 upon omega R3 C2 10 del plus 1 upon 10 del. And here in order to calculate the 10 del we have the formula as 1 upon omega R1 C1 and omega or omega R3 C3. So here Tandil is calculated as omega equal to 314 means 340 into here we have used this formula R3 C3 and here we have given the value of R3 and C3 so Tandil is calculated as 0.008478 Now on substituting value of Tandil in this equation means in order to calculate the value of R1 right now we will substitute the value of Tandil R4, R3 and C2 here so on substitute, substituting the value of R1 will be 33.39 into 10 power 8 ohms. Similarly, the power loss will be V square upon R1 and V is given as 33 kilo volts. So 33 into 10 power 3 square upon R1. Just now we have obtained the value of R1 here. 33.39 into 10 power 8 ohms. So the power loss will be 0 0.326 watt. Now here we have the next numericals An underground cable of inductance 0 0.189 milli henry per kilometer and a capacitance of 0 0.3 microfarad per kilometer is connected to an overhead line having an inductance of 1.26 milli henry per kilometer and capacitance given as 0 0.009 microfarad per kilometer and calculate the transmitted and reflected voltage and current waves at the junctions if a source of 200 Kilo volt travels to the junctions along the cables and along the overhead lines. So here you can see the source impedance of the cable can be calculated as zero is equal to root and L1 upon C1. And here you can see the for cable the inductance and the capacitance is given. So here we have inductance value of inductance 0 0.189 milli and per kilometer. Similarly, the value of C is given as 0 0.3 microfarad per kilometer. So zero is calculated as root and L1 upon C1. And source impedance of line Z2 will be root under L2 upon C2. And for line, here you can see the inductance and the capacitance value is also given for line. So just we need to substitute this value in order to get Z2. Means Z2 for the lines. So we'll get here 374.2 ohm. Now when the source travels along the cables, so tau will be z2 minus z1 upon z2 plus z1 and here we have z2 and z1 given in the uh, given means we have calculated z1 and z2 here and substitute the value of z1 and z2 in order to get tau so we will get here 0 0.8742 now the reflected wave is calculated as e dash and e dash is equal to tau into e and the e is given in the equation as 200 kilo volt so just to have calculated the value of tau as 0 0.8742 so 0 0.8742 into 200 and it is going to give 174.84 kilovolt. Similarly, transmitted wave will be E double S equal to 1 plus tau into E. So 1 plus tau means 1 plus this value. So it will be 1.8742 into 200. And this is going to give 374.84 kilovolt. Now the reflected current wave will be E dash upon 0 1. And E dash is just we have calculated the value of E dash. E dash is 174.84 into 10 to the power 3. And also we have calculated the value for 0 1. And Z1 is 25.1. So it is going to give 9, 6, sorry, 6.97 kilo amperes. And the transmitted current wave will be I double dash means E to the E to the power E double dash upon Z2. And this is 374.84 into 10 power 3 upon 374.20. And this is going to give 1.002 kilo amperes. And when the wave travels along the lines, so tau dash will be Z1 minus Z2. And we have travels along the lines, so this is for along the lines. So tau dash will be 0 1 minus z2 upon 0 1 plus z2. So right now its value will be negative here. Now the reflected wave E dash will be tau into E and this will be negative. So minus 174.84 kilovolt. Similarly, E dash E double dash will be 1 plus tau into E. 
and in place of tau e again we have negative value so 1 minus this value into e, e and e is given as 200 kilovolt so 25.16 kilovolt now the transmitted current wave will be i double dash equals to e double dash upon z2 and 25.16 upon 25.1 and this is going to be 1.006 kilo amperes and the reflected current wave will be i dash equals to e dash upon 0 once so just we have obtained the e dash and 0 once and here just substitute the value of we will get here as 0 0.467 kilo amperes and in ampere we will get here 467 amperes and here we have the next one as a transmission line of source impedance 500 ohm is connected to a cable of source impedance 60 ohms at the other end and if a source of 500 kilo volt travels along the lines to a junction point find the voltage build up at the junction so voltage build up at the junction means the transmitter we have that is et or e double dash so z1 is given as 500 ohms similarly z2 is given as 60 ohms in the equation now in order to calculate the tau so we have z2 minus z1 upon z2 plus z1 and it will be under the modular signs under the main here so right now it will be 0 0.785 so transmitted coefficient will be 1 plus tau, tau dash means it is going to be 1.785 and it will be the transmitted dash so it will be 1 plus tau into e and in, in place of e you have given 500 kilovolt here you can see if a source of 500 kilovolt travels along the lines means the value of e is given 500 kilovolt so we'll get the value of ET here means transmitted wave and again here we have the next important numericals an overhead line of 300 ohm source impedance bifurcates into two lines of 150 ohm and 90 ohms source impedance respectively and if a step wave of 150 kilovolt is launched on the line estimate the magnitude of waves transmitted on the bifurcated lines and here you can see the reflection and the refraction can be shown by the following figures. First one is the overhead line of 300 ohm is here given. This is our 300 ohm, 300 ohm source impedance given. And here this is transmitted into two parts means for 150 ohm impedance and 90 ohm impedance. So the current across this will be I1 and across this will be I2. So here according to the Kirchhoff current law we can write it as here IEF means this is IEF, IEF and this is IR and this is in this direction. So IF minus IR equals to I1 plus I2 this is I1 and this is I2 this direction this is outgoing direction. So I1 plus I2 now IF will be EF upon 300 since the impedance is 300 for this similarly for IR E R upon 300 same impedance will be used here equals to ET upon 150 for I1 here we have 150 similarly impedance has 90 ohm given for I2 so ET upon 90 so we will get here as EF minus ER equal to 5.33 ET here so and this is our equation one sir and we know EF plus ER is going to give ET means transmitted wave and this is our equation two so adding one and two will get here 2EF equal to ET into 1 plus 5.33 and that is going to be 6.33 ET. So from this you will get the value of ET as 2EF upon 6.33. So 2 into EF and EF is given as 150 kilovolt and this will be 47.39 kilovolt. And here you can see the value of EF is means the step we have 150 kilovolt is launched on the lines. EF means incident voltage wave, falling wave or you can simply say it as a falling wave. So I1 will be 47.39 here you can see for I1 here for I1 we have written here ET upon 150 similarly for I2 we have written ET upon 90 so just we need to substitute value of ET and here ET in order to get the value of I1 and I2 so here on substituting value of ET will get here here we have ET as 47.39 so 47.39 upon 150 this is going to give 0.3159 kilo amperes. Similarly, I2 will be 0.526 kilo amperes.
Now here we have the next numerical has a voltage we have of 2500 kilo volt is traveling on a line that is 275 ohms and the arrestors connected to the line has a protective level of 1500 kilo volt. Calculate the current in the wave current through arrestors and the arrestor resistance at this current. So here in the questions we have given as ZC the value of ZC is given as 275 ohm similarly BP is given as means protective level means 1500 kilo volt and VW so we have voltage we have given as 2500 kilo volt and currently the wave is calculated I omega will be V omega upon ZC and V omega is 2500 upon ZC ZC is 1500 so we get at 9.09 kilo amperes. Now current through arrestor will be calculated as 2BW minus BP upon ZC. So just substitute all the values will get the value of IA here. And here IA will be 12.727 kilo amperes. Similarly current through resistance at this current means value of RA. Sorry arrestor resistance is, is need here we have to calculate the arrestor resistance. So to calculate RA here we have RA equals to BP upon IA. So just use this formula in order to calculate the value of arrestor resistance. And here we have BP as 1500 kilo volt and IA just have obtained IA as 12.727 kilo amperes. So here we have the value of RA as 117.86 ohm. Now a source of 1600 kilo volt traveling in a line of Natural impedance 400 ohm arrives at a junction with two lines of impedance 300 ohms and 160 ohm respectively. Find and derive expression used and the source voltage transmitted and reflected at the junctions. So here you can see the parameter given in the equation is Z1 and Z1 is 400 ohm. Similarly, Z2 is also given as 300 ohms. Here we have the two lines of impedance 300 ohms and 160 ohms. So Z3 will be 160 ohm here. And the source magnitude is given as 1600 kilovolt. This is our source magnitude. Now, the transmitted we have will be the formula for transmitted will be it means e double s will be 2e upon z1 upon 1 upon z1 plus 1 upon z2 plus 1 upon z3. So here, just substitute the value will get the transmitted voltage. So on substituting, we'll get a 663 kilovolt here. And the transmitted current in the line Z2 will be E double dash upon Z2 and Z2 plus Z3 and all the parameters given and just now we have calculated the value of E double dash. So it will be 1016 ampere on substituting all the values. Similarly, the transmitted current in the line Z3. So E double dash upon Z3 into Z2 plus Z3 and it will be 191906 amperes. So just remember the formula and you can easily calculate all the values here. Now here we have a 50 kilo 50 kV 100 volt slash 200 kilo volt testing transformers has a leakage resistance of 8 percentage and the resistance resistance is given as 2 percentage at insulator of 2 nano faraday capacitor is to be tested at 500 kilo volt using the transformer as a resonant transformer at 50 hertz and find the input voltage to the transformer. So let's see the solution here. So here you can see the maximum current that can be supplied by the testing transform is I is equals to and here we have given the 50 kVA so 50 kVA upon 200 kilo volt since the testing transform is used so we have to use the secondary voltage here 200 kilo volt so 50 kVA upon 200 kilo volt and that is going to be 0 0.25 amperes and the reactance of cable is calculated as X is equals to VC upon I and the VC is given as here you can see the capacitor is to be tested at 500 kilo volt. So 500 into 10 power 3 upon I and value of I is here of 0 0.25. So 0 0.25. So you get here 2000 kilo ohms. And now leakage reactance of the transformer is here. The leakage reactance here you can see the leakage resistance is 8 percent is given. So 8 percent is into V upon I. So 8 percent is means 0 0.08 into V and in place of V we have to use the secondary voltage. And that is 200 kilo volt and V upon I. 
सो जस्ट नाउ हैव कैलकुलेट बाय आई 0.25 सो वी अपॉन आई 0.25 है सो इन प्लेस ऑफ वी हैव 200 किलो वोल्ट अपॉन आई 0.25 है सो विल गेट 64 किलो ओम नाउ एट रेजोनेंस वी नो एक्स इज इक्वल टू एक्स एल्स है सो एडिशनल रिएक्टेंस नीडेड विल बी द वैल्यू ऑफ मींस इज रिएक्टेंस आई केवल माइनस लीकेज रिएक्टेंस ऑफ द ट्रांसफार्मर सो 2000 किलो ओम माइनस 64 एंड दिस इज गोइंग टू बी 1936 किलो एम्पियर्स सो दिस इज एडिशनल रेजोनेंस नीडेड now inductance of additional resonance at 50 kHz since we know x is equals to 2 pi f l so this is our popular formula and that is x is equals to 2 pi f l and in order to calculate dl we have x upon 2 pi f l so here addition reactance is here addition reactance needed we have 1 and 3 6 kilo ampere so 1 and 3 6 into 10 power 3 upon 2 pi e upon means 50 so we will get at 6162.46 henry now R equal to total resonance in the circuit on 50 kVA base and here you can see a resonance at 2 percentage here 2 percentage is given here and additional 2 percentage is added here you can see 2 percent is already given in the questions and additional and here we have additional 2 percent is given so total it will be 4 percent is and here assuming this additional is 2 percent is assumed for the inductor to be used and the connecting leader. Now, ohmic value of resonance will be R equals to this 4 percentage into V upon I. So, V is a secondary voltage. So, 210 power 3 upon I is 0 0.25. So, we will get here 32 kilo ohm. Now, the primary excitation voltage is E2 on the secondary of the transfer will E2 equal to I into R. So, I we have calculated 0 0.25 and value of R is here 32 kilo ohms. So, 32 into 10 power 3 and this is going to be 8 kilo volt. Now, we know the relation as E1 upon E2 equal to V1 upon V2. So, from this we can calculate the value of E1 and it is going to be 4 volt. Now, input kilo volt. And furthermore, we can calculate the input kilo watt as E1 upon V1 into 50 kVA given in the equations. So, 4 upon 400 into 50, it is going to be 0.5 kilo watt. Now here again we have one more important numerical A resonance divider of 1400 kV impulse has a high voltage arm of 16 kilo, kilo ohms and a low voltage arm consisting 16 members of 2500 ohms. Two watt resistor in parallel. The divider is connected to a CRO through a cable of source impedance 75 ohms and is terminated at the other end through a 75 ohm resistor. Calculate the exact divider ratio and the voltage displayed by CRO. And here we can see um, the high voltage arm of 16 kilo ohm is given and a low voltage arm consisting of 16 members of 250 ohm given. So high voltage arm R1 is given as 16 kilo ohm means 16,000 ohms and a low voltage resistance R2 and it consists of 16 members so 250 upon 16 ohms. The and also terminating resonance is R2 dash and R2 dash is given as here 75 ohm and the cable of source impedance 75 ohms and is terminated at the other end given 75 days. Sorry, this is our this is the value for terminating resonance R2 dash means 75 ohm given here. Now, here we have the formula to calculate the divider ratio and divider ratio is represented as A. So, it is represented as A and A will be. 1 plus R1 upon R2 plus R1 upon R2 dash and here we have given the value of R1, R2, R2 dash just we need to substitute all these values so on substituting we will get the value of A as 1238.3 and the voltage displayed by CR will be V2 is equal to R2 upon Z1 plus R1 into V1 and here in order to calculate the Z1 first we need to calculate the value of Z in impedance. So here we have V1 given in the question as a, here V1 given as 1400 kilo volt and Z will be R2 dash plus R2 R1 into R2 upon R1 plus R2 and just substitute all the value will get here the value of Z as 90.60 ohms and we need the value of Z1 so Z1 will be Z plus R2 dash into R2 upon 2Z so substitute the values of R2 dash R2 Z will get the value of Z1 and it is going to give the value of Z1 and that is 14.27 ohm. Now V2 will be R2 upon R1 plus R1 into V2 sorry V2 is equal to R2 upon Z1 plus R1 into V1 
and Z1 just we have uh, calculated and R1 is already given and V1 is also given. Sir. So on substituting, we will get the value of V2 as 3642 volt. And again here we have one more important numericals given. Our Agoski coil is to be designed to measure the impulse current 10 kilo amperes having a rate of change of current as given as 10 11 amperes. The current here impulse current is given as 10 kilo amperes and the rate of change is current as given as 10, 10 to the power 11 ampere per second. And the current is read by a VTBM as a potential drop across the integrating circuit connected to the secondary and estimate the value of mutual inductance and the capacitance to be connected if the meter reading is to be 10 volt of full scale deflections and resistance has to be and resistance has to be selected as 2 into 10 power 3 ohms so you can see the impulse current to be measured is given as 10 kilo ampere in the question so 10 kilo ampere gives 10 to the power 4 amperes and the rate of change of current is given as 10 to the power 11 ampere per, uh, 11 per, ampere per second so it is 10 to the power 11 ampere per second given sir. And, and it is to be appreciated that the rate is mentioned for one four cycle of the sinusoidal wave. So we have to take one four cycle for the sinusoidal wave. So here we can simply use the entire method as here 10 to the power 11 ampere current is obtained in one second and one ampere current is obtained is 1 upon 10 to the power 11 in one second and 10 to the power 4 means uh, impulse current is given as 10 to the power 4 ampere so 10 to the power 4 ampere current is obtained is 1 upon 10 to the power 11 into 10 to the power 4 in 1 seconds and that is going to give 10 to the power 7 seconds so time period will be 4 into 10 to the power minus 7 seconds since it is for 1 fourth so the time period will be 4 into 10 to the power minus 7 seconds now frequency will be 1 upon d so 1 upon 4 into 10 to the power minus 7 and this is going to give 1 upon 4 into 10 to the power minus 7 cycle per second and omega will be 2 pi f uh, so omega is equal to 2 pi into f and in place of f we have this value means 1 upon 4 into 10 power minus 7 so this is going to give pi upon 2 into 10 power 7 and here the bt bm reads 10 below volt means here you can see here you can see the meter reading is to be 10 volt given in the first for given for full scale deflection sir. so bt bm reading is given as 10 volt so Vm will be here 10 volt and you know the formula as Vm is equals to 1 upon C into R into M into I and this is our formula so remember this formula so Vm is equals to 1 upon C R into M I and here Vm is given as 10 1 upon C R into M into I and in place of I is impulse current so 10 to the power 4 ampere given so here M upon C R equal to 10 power minus 3 but we know 1 upon CR means the scale factor of, of integrators and 1 upon CR is going to give omega upon 10 pi so M into and here we have M into 1 upon CR and 1 upon CR is omega upon 10 pi so M into in place of 1 upon omega CR so omega upon 10 pi into 10 power minus 3 and from this we will get the value of omega M as 2 into 10 power minus 9 Henry so this is our mutual inductance and also at last we have given the value of R as 2 into 10 power minus 2 into power 3 ohm here you can see the value of a is r is also mentioned in the question sir. here the resistance has to, has to be selected as 2 into 10 power 3 ohm so 1 upon cr is equals to omega upon 10 pi just now we have seen this so 1 upon cr equal to omega upon 10 pi so from this here we can calculate it since r is already given in the equation means 2 into 10 power 3 ohms and from this you can simply calculate the value of c so c is going to be 10 power minus 9 farad so these were some important numericals that are frequently asked in the final examinations in high voltage engineering subject hope you enjoy the lectures thanks for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to my channels thank you